that today is our Zoe Covenant service. It's a very simple meeting because the battle is won. And I'm talking to you very briefly on life from the supernatural realm. In John chapter 15 from verse 4, Jesus said, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye. Please, can you go back where I'm reading? No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Verse 5. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Keep going. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will. It shall be done. This is a blank check. The condition is abide. Somebody tell your neighbor, abide. abide. You shall ask what you will. It shall be done unto you. Next verse. Herein is my father glorified. How is God glorified? Look at the next verse. That you'll be how much fruit? Much. much fruit. So shall ye be my disciple. So God is not interested in your, your life. God wants you to bear much fruit. And when you abide in Jesus, you'll bear fruit. The world needs to look at you and celebrate your God. And I declare that this year, you will draw life from him. Amen. Where you draw life from determines how your life manifests. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Now, I am sure that most of you here are human beings. I know there are some angels in our midst. But most, are you here? Anybody here that's a human being, wave your hand. Okay. How many human beings do you see that have wings that fly? Ah? Huh? So, but human beings run. And human beings walk. Come and talk to me. Yes, huh? yes, Running is natural, but it's faster than walking. Talk to me. Yes, now, this Bible verse says, people that wait on the Lord, the first thing is, they will mount up on wings. That's not natural. The implication, it doesn't mean that you're going to get physical wings and mount up. It's a figurative statement. It simply means that when you wait on the Lord, your results must be beyond natural. They're not hearing me. That the result you're going to get will be beyond natural. And even after you, even if you don't mount up and fly, that you cannot be slow. You will run. And even if you're one of those who cannot run, you cannot be stand still. You must walk. But there is nobody that waits on the law without a move. Even if nothing happens for you, there must be a move forward. So I declare over you, you will go forward. You will mount up. Your results will shock your neighbors. Since it's not you, somebody collect that one. And until men wonder at you, they're not seeing God enough in you. People should be able to look at you and say, I wonder. No, you didn't hear me. Are you hearing me? They were asking uh, Papi Deosa the difference between uh, signs and wonders. Uh, so he said the signs are the ones that uh, you see that point you to something, but the wonders are the ones you see and you say, I wonder. <laughs> After today, when they see you, they say, I wonder. Somebody missed their portion. 
I need you to know that the seasons in Nigeria will not get better. I'm not here to shout today. Are you still with me? Yes, I've done much of the shouting. Continue next week. Now, the seasons in Nigeria will not get better. I didn't promise you that. But I promised you one thing. That your life will be above Nigeria. Because there are men that submit to seasons. And there are men that seasons submit to. In Genesis 26, there was famine in the land. But in that same land, Isaac sowed and got a hundredfold. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. We don't submit to seasons. When a man carries God, iron gates open up their own accord. How many of you are carrying God into this year? I speak over you today. Let great doors open for you. Amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. And anytime you see inexplainable open doors, God is involved. Or the supernatural is involved. In Isaiah chapter 45, he said to Cyrus, I will go before you. I'll make the crooked places straight. I'll make the rough places plain. I will open to you the gates of brass. I will break asunder the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness. I'll give you hidden riches of secret places. That you may know that I, the Lord, that call you by your name. I am the God of Israel. That's what happens when men encounter God. Brothers and sisters, if there is nothing in your life that makes men wonder, I believe that this year is your year to encounter God. Yes, Are you with me? Yes, if everything about you can be explained by your labor, by your education, by your background, by your beauty, God is not with you. If God is with you, people will calculate everything about you and say it doesn't add up. Her education and her manifestation are not at the same level. No, you are not hearing. Are you with me? I told the story. I'm not trying to disparage anybody. Please don't be annoyed with me. Uh, are you here? When we were in the campus, we had this sister that was in our uh, prayer team and all of that. She was a very nice young lady. And... Uh, I'm telling you, among the workers in the church, I think she was the shortest worker. You are not hearing me. And you can't call her pretty. The only glory on her was the glory of the Lord. <laughs> you can't call her pretty. I'm telling you, the day she showed me her husband, as we left school, she was one of the first to marry. I married a loaded man. The, when I meet the man is handsome and handsome. <laughs> handsome. <laughs> Are you hearing me? <laughs> if you see the car she's pulling. And I, I only know there's only two ways he could have married that guy. That guy. Either he charmed, she charmed him. <laughs> or God gave him to her. No, you are not hearing me. I am not a bad person, please. <laughs> don't be annoyed. There's only two ways. It's either she charmed him or God said, you served me well. Take. I stretch my hand toward you. Before this year is over, may God give you something. You have to realize that God is a good God. Any man helped by God automatically begins to attract the help of man. If God is helping you, quickly man will start helping you. That's what you see in the life of David. In 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 18, you will see how God began to help David and men began to gather to help him. Sir, he will help you. Amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. And I want you to know this year, you will draw that life. Amen. Now, the, the picture of drawing life from the supernatural I can give you today is from Zechariah chapter 4 from verse 1. Zechariah chapter 4 from verse 1. Let, let's go there quickly. Okay, and the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. Next verse. And said unto me, what seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick all of gold with a ball upon the top of it. And his seven lamps thereon, 
and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof. Keep going. And two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the ball, and the other upon the left side thereof. Keep going. So I answered and spoke to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? The angel that talked with me answered and said, No, it's not that what this be. He said, Ah, we told you a religious experience. You don't understand this picture. And I said, No, my Lord. Look at the next verse. Then he answered and spoke unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by power. But by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Keep going. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, and shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Faster. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His sons shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For who has despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hands of Zerubbabel. With these seven, these are the eyes of the Lord. Quick run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Lift your right hand above your head. I declare over you today, you will finish and men will say this is grace. <laughs> Friends and family will testify that your life is a grace life. Now, what happened here? Very simple. Uh, the prophet saw a vision. In the vision, there is this uh, big uh, seven, uh, I mean, you know menorah, this uh, Jewish candlestick. Uh, have you seen this candle that has seven things? It's called a menorah. Now, uh, the, he saw one like that. But you see, in those days, they don't put candle with wax like that. Some of them, they put just the, the, what they call the candlestick. They light it like the old lantern you use in the village. The lantern that uses crude oil or oil. Do you remember? Okay, so, so God showed him a picture. They saw oil direct from the olive tree being channeled into the lamp, into a bowl in the lamp, and is distributing the oil to the candlesticks. And then, now, if the oil... It's not being bought in the market, but it's coming direct from the olive tree. Connected pipe to the olive tree, drawing directly. Are you with me? That means that the light cannot stop. Huh? It's not like oil you finish, you go buy oil. Oil is being drawn right from source. You don't need to buy. As long as the olive tree is there, the oil will flow. Come and talk to me. So the man said, I don't understand. He's saying, now, what I'm showing you now is the picture of God's prophetic word to a man called Zerubbabel. And now you know the story of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel had a big vision to rebuild the temple of Jerusalem. Are you with me? He's a descendant of the lineage of David. But he couldn't become king because his father was captured during the time of Nebuchadnezzar and the rest of them and taken into captivity. Hello? So, even though he is one of the royal children, he couldn't become anything. And he has suffered as a slave for many years. And he's not the one to take over the throne. But he decided, I'm going to rebuild the temple of Jerusalem without money. He is broke. He's a slave. Can you lift up your hand? Every dream you have this year, the Lord funded for you. Amen. Now, for Zerubbabel to have that dream, it's either he is mad or he has faith. Talk to me. Solomon spent years building that temple with money that David left for him and the one he has are the richest man in the world. And this poor boy, who is a slave, says he wants to go and do that. There are some of you here that are thinking that what you are planning to do this year cannot be achieved. But I lift my hand over you. If God sent me to you, you will overdo that thing. Amen. So Zerubbabel, nobody gave him a chance. But the moment he started, the Bible said, favor showed up. Even King Artaxerxes I decided to help him. All kinds of people decided to help him. And the project began to go forward. 
then evil eyes came. You know, there are people, anytime they see you succeeding, their eye turns. And the Bible said they began to write petitions. They wrote to the king, wrote to the forest commanders, wrote to everybody and told them, this young man, you know, he's supposed to be from the lineage of David. If he finishes building the temple, the people will start supporting him. Maybe he'll rebel against you. And the king says, stop. The favor was withdrawn. All the people that were supporting him to build backed up because anyone giving him money now, they will say the person is joining the opposition to the king. I don't know if you are getting what I'm talking about. Everything died. And for 13 years, not one block came upon the project. Until these prophets came up. And he said to them, God has shown me. Uh, Mister, you used to draw before. You used to have oil by buying oil and putting oil. He said, but now I am connecting you right to source. You are drawing right now from the supernatural. That from today, you are oil will never go dry. He said, this is the prophecy for you. And I'm speaking over somebody here now. That from this year, you will never learn dry again. You will never struggle for grace. Never struggle for favor. Never struggle for breakthrough. Never struggle for increase. Never struggle for empowerment. I speak over you today. Let the doors open. And let them remain open. I can't hear you. Let them remain open. He said, this is a prophetic word to Zerubbabel. That is not by might or by power, but by my spirit. And then he said, no, 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 no. Zerubbabel, I know you are concerned about the people opposing you. He said, now listen. Are you with me? He said, Zerubbabel, you don't need to fight the people opposing you. Let me address them. He said, who are thou? Oh, great mountain. Now, many of you, when you read that passage, you read it like somebody who didn't go to school. You read it like somebody who doesn't know where punctuations and uh, marks and all of that are. He said, who art thou, O great mountain? Question mark. So that statement stopped at O great mountain. He didn't say, who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel. He said, who art thou, O great mountain? Question mark. And they said, before Zerubbabel, you shall be a plan. That means you used to be a mountain to other people. But from today, you become a plane where Zerubbabel appears. Are you hearing me here? So as you step out now, what used to be a mountain become a plane before you. No, no, you don't understand. I, I need to explain. I'm taking calm, calm, even though I'm wasting. It looks like time is going. But listen, you say, you need to understand when we explain something. Don't just say amen. Get the picture. He said, who are that, oh great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you become a plan. Now, a mountain is an elevated piece of real estate, an elevated land. Is that not so? Huh? When you are passing a place, you see a mountain. The mountain is visible. A plan is not visible. It's just on the ground like that. Huh? He said, when you are passing from today, the people that you used to see, the opposition you used to see, that thing that used to be very big, you just look at, where is it? What happened? Can I announce to you, that man that said over his dead body has disappeared. That thing that said it will never happen will disappear. If I hear your amen, another portion. Anybody that stood on your way, that person is going down for you. Somebody shout, the mountain has become plain. Scream it again, the mountain has become plain. If your amen lies, another portion. Listen, your years of stagnation has ended. There will be a supply of the spirit. You will achieve it. Not by might, but by the spirit. Amen. Shout, I will get there. Amen. Now, there are three things that will sponsor our Zoe life in this new year. Uh, the first one is altars. Second one is covenant. Third one is blessing. Somebody say, somebody say altars. altars. Say again, covenant. Altars. Say again, blessing. blessing. On the authority of Jesus, I command your destiny to rise. Amen. So in this first service, let me talk to you on the mystery of altars. We have done that again and again. In, Jacob, in Genesis chapter 35 verse 1, 
you will see when God spoke to Jacob. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. And make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fledest from the face of Esau thy brother. God said to Jacob, Go to Bethel. Somebody say Bethel. Go to my house, dwell there. Better means the house of God. Is that true? He says, settle in my house and build me an altar and then your destiny will rise from there. I come to tell somebody here today, your destiny will rise. Amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. Now, you say altars are meeting place between men and spirits. And you set up an altar by sacrifice. By spiritual memorials. That's what an altar is. And many of you have raised an altar of sacrifice by your first fruits. I declare over you on the authority of Jesus. That all through this year, there will be supernatural interactions in your life. Amen. I wish I can hear your amen. amen. Now, what does altars do? The first thing an altar does for you is to make your environment a spiritual habitat. That's the first thing it does. It makes your environment a spiritual habitat. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Are you here? Okay, please look up here. If Okay, some of you are writing. Uh, so write, look up. Now, uh, praise the Lord. How does something become an altar? I know you are written down now. Uh, did you go to night school? Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. Keep your book outside and listen. How does something become an altar? Uh, the altar in your village didn't just become an altar. Uh, this is a chair. It has nothing about it. The carpenter came, knock chair, knock chair, knock chair, knock chair, finish. This is a chair. And they kept it there. And this old grandma came and took Fanta and took banana, and took red cloth, and put on that thing, and made some incantations, and then suddenly, that chair becomes an altar. And anytime you enter there, there will be a traffic of spirits. Come and talk to me. That thing becomes now, it becomes a spiritual habitat. Hello? Spirits know this is our territory. Now when you put an altar for God, you suddenly find that wherever you are becomes a habitat of grace. I stretch my hand toward you. From this morning as you get back, let that business become a habitat of the spirit. Let that marriage carry God. I can't hear your amen. When an altar is raised, it integrates the supernatural into natural realities. That's what an altar does. It integrates the supernatural into natural realities. You find out that you are no longer operating just natural realities. You're operating natural and the supernatural is integrated. Listen to me, people of God. A lot of people that come to church want the supernatural to come in, but they don't want to do the things that make the supernatural come in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I was teaching some workers some time ago. And I say, please look up here. If you met somebody that is your neighbor, your brother, your sister, that uh, went to join a secret cult, and they told the person, when you wake up in the morning, put your leg together and face the rising sun and do hoo, 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 like an owl or a dog that is hooting. <laughs> is, is anybody hearing me? Do you know that that man with a PhD will wake up in the morning, open his window, bend his leg like that, and begin to hoo, hoo, hoo. What I'm saying, is that true? Yeah. And if they told him to do it for 30 minutes, he would do it. But do you know there are many of you here who say you are baptized in the Holy Ghost? And you can wake up in the day. Two days, three days, four days. You didn't spend up to 15 minutes praying in other tongues. You know why you don't do that? Because tongues don't make sense to you. And anybody whose tongues doesn't make sense to is an evidence that the person is sense controlled. 
That is one sign in your life that you are not spirit controlled. You are sense controlled. It doesn't have to make sense to make spirit. Are they hearing my voice here? But you won't do it. The same thing with altars. A man's business, sorry, a man's farm is bad. An old man in the village, his farm is not doing well. He goes to see the native doctor. And the native doctor said, don't worry. Go and get me a goat. Get me a chicken. Come. And the man went and brought a goat and a chicken. And the man said, let's go to that T-junction. They went to the T-junction. And the man dropped the chicken. Made some sacrifices. His farm is over there. The man came here and made a sacrifice there and said, don't worry, your farm will produce. That old man believes that that thing has cured his farm. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And he goes there and he sees result. People come to church and they don't believe that the sacrifice they made here has cured their life. They have no understanding. To them, they lost money. Or to them, somebody with a smart mouth talked to them and they gave their hard-end cars. And then after that, it doesn't work for them. Because it won't work except by faith. Whatever is not of faith is sin. Don't give if you don't believe. Don't get involved. But your life and destiny and career must rise. Yeah. Lift your hand higher than your head. By the Holy Ghost, let your destiny rise. Amen. Let everything begin to work again. Amen. If I hear your amen, you are blessed already. an altar does, it, it prosecutes spiritual battles without your effort. An altar is prosecuting spiritual battles without your effort. You don't even know that battles are going on. I mean, God said to Moses, I will have war with Amalek forever. How do you make that happen? Set up an altar, go and sit down. He set up an altar, called the Job and this, he went and sat down and every God took over. Philistines were coming against Israel. And Samuel took a sucking lamb and laid it on the altar. And the Bible said God turned that from heaven and discomfited the Philistines. It didn't say Israel went to fight. It said God turned that from heaven. And this, because an altar can set up a system of your battles without you being involved. A man is trying to kill you. He is in a native doctor's house. He's doing one thing or another. But while he's touching that altar, your own altar is reporting. Because there are some battles on this earth that has to be altar against altar. You cannot be there. You don't know what they are doing, but there is something about you that is speaking. Am I talking to somebody here today? I stretch my hand toward you from today. Let the altar of Calvary speak for you. Let your altar of sacrifice connect to that altar. If I hear your amen, you take another answer. So what do you do to draw life from the supernatural after this service? Number one is have a right now faith. Have a right now faith. Isaiah 43. He said, remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. For behold, I will do a new thing. I don't care how bad it was five years ago. Two years ago. One month ago. Have a right now faith. Somebody say right now. Right now. Louder right now. Right now. Bolder right now. Right now. Right, louder right now. You need to have a right now faith. That's what you need to have. That's what will change your story. So if you are here, and while I'm telling you that God has changed your life, you are still thinking about how bad things were. After the program, I think, uh, is it on the night vigil or the day before this, somebody came to my office. And then... Uh, I was praying for I asked, uh, two persons to see me, and then I saw the person walking. I said, they said, okay, she joined us. I said, no problem. After the night vision on Saturday morning, uh, Pastor, uh, look at this, look at this, look at this, and he's talking about how things were. And I said, were you in this program? He said, yes. All true, he said, yes. I said, to fear. How can you with this attitude and confession have a testimony? You were here for 12 days, prophecies and prayers were done. After service, you come behind there now to kneel down to tell me how bad your life has been. 
for me to do what? Give you alligator pepper? You the craze. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Well, what do you want me to do? We have done everything we can do. Trust God. Change your thinking. Believe your answer has come. See me and explaining your whole life story. At least give God three months to find out whether something has changed. Am I talking to somebody here too? What is wrong with you? Are you still with me? The second thing to do is to demonstrate sacrificial love. That's how to raise an altar. That's how to draw from the zoe. Demonstrate sacrificial love. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 15, God said to Abraham, because you have done this thing, he said, and we didn't withhold Isaac from me. In blessing, I will bless you. In 1 Kings chapter 3, 3 to 5, the Bible says, Solomon went to Gibeon and made the sacrifice. That same night, God came and said, ask anything. Many of you have given your first fruits. And those who have not given, I'll give you a chance this morning to make a commitment and give in the next two weeks. But I'm trusting the Holy Spirit that in your sacrifice, my God will lift you. Yeah. And then the third thing to do is to speak your revelation as your reality. Speak your revelation as your reality. In Psalm 50 verse 23, put it on the screen. Psalm 50 verse 23. Psalm 50 verse 23. Who so offered praise glorified me. And to him that uttereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of the Lord. If you behave right, if you talk right, if you line up your word, God said, I will show you my salvation. As you live here now, please, if there is one law you must keep, uh, that's the law of the tongue. Somebody say the law of the tongue. The law of the tongue. Death and life are we are in the power. Keep the law of the tongue. Confess only positive things. And then the fourth thing to do is that you invent life with prophecy. First Timothy 1 verse 18, he said, by this prophecy, war a good warfare. So you are going to the embassy, you tell yourself, pastor said, under the anointing, that nobody can say no to me. Embassy, here I come. You can't say no to me. Is anybody hearing me? Uh, is anybody hearing me? You are going to lay a foundation for that business. Pastor said, I'm going to build this by, with ease and speed. And I will not swear to do it. I have only 20,000, but I'm laying foundation now. In seven months, I will be in this house. And you begin to, you are invading everything intentionally. You are remembering what was said and hammering it there. Are you hearing me? You look at yourself in your mirror and say, I am beautiful. Pastor said under the anointing, I won't wait until June to get engaged. Therefore, let the man come. Anywhere he is now, I hit him on the head. Remember me. <laughs> is anybody hearing me? <laughs> you invade every territory with prophecy. And you see results that will shock you. Stand to your feet. Yeah.